these are the sizes of chipboard that you're going to want to cut for our school yearly folio. Two 10 by one and a half inch pieces, two 10 by six for the front and back, and one 10 by 2.4 or two and a quarter. So those are the chipboard sizes. I've already pre uh, prepared mine with the score tape sheet that we use, I use, and I do sell those at countrycraftcreations.com, and I'm going to use two pieces of 12 by 12 barn red, also the linen cardstock that we sell at countrycraftcreations.com. And I want to use my art glitter glue to put my pieces together, and I'm just a quarter, I mean an eighth of an inch away from the edge. That's all you need. And we'll overlap. This is such a fun little folio, and what I love about it, I can do them yearly now for the parents, and I'm only going to do it for the parents at the grade schoolers, so there's not so many. And they can keep track each year in their little folios, just important little things or pictures like the first day of school that we take, things like that. So when laying out our chipboard, our first largest piece is going to be pretty much centered on that seam. Then we want one of the spines that is one and a half inches. Then we'll have the next big one, one and a half inch, and the two and a quarter, then we'll go at the top. We're going to put this together just like we would if we're wrapping a mini album. So I need my quilting ruler so I can do an inch at the bottom, or you can also score an inch at the bottom and an inch at the side, whichever you like. When doing this, I want to have an inch away from the edge to start, basically, and as long as I do that, I know I'll be pretty much lined up on here. And then I'll use my quarter inch score tape again as a spacer. So I can move all my pieces, because I know I'm going to start with a 6 by 10 inch piece, one inch away from this edge. You can use your wet adhesive. I prefer score tape or art, art, um, art glitter glue, sorry, or the score tape sheet. Score tape sheets, because it makes it go by so much faster, saves your roll of score tape, and you're not spending so much time preparing your chipboard. When I use my quilting ruler, you can pick these up at Joann's or any of your stores like that. An inch away from the side. And then I burnish on the back of my chipboard. Oops. Yeah, this is uh, where it's 12 by 12. It's a little harder to keep the whole thing in camera. So I'll have to move as I go. And my quarter inch score tape. And I love this bright red. It's going to look great with the Echo Park School line. I should give you the correct name for it. Back to school. The next piece that's going to go down. Is the one and a half by ten inch spine. And I want to just butt it right up against that edge of my score tape sheet and um, uh, the backing. Again, my quarter inch score tape. This way, I know my paper is going to have plenty of room to fold. And if you're not using the artisan linen that we sell at Country Craft Creations, then you won't, you shouldn't have those uh, in tears or cracking. If, if you have that quarter inch <clears throat> spacing. Okay, using my quilting ruler all the way through the process. Oops. Okay. 
I'll just keep moving my paper so you can see. Next piece to go down is the second one and a half by 10 inch spine. This is why I like the score tape sheets. This took two sheets. And there was a little piece left over, but the amount of time spent now not having to spend on the cover is worth it. We've done this in six minutes from prep everything. So, yes, I mean, I did have them prep beforehand, but that only took me five minutes to put these down and then trim it. And when you can spend less time on your covers, you're going to be able to make more albums. This time of year, that's important with the holidays, right around the corner. So we're halfway there. Okay, now your chipboard will be perfectly straight. No problems with it being off. And then we're going to cut this end down to just one inch. And we can continue on just like we make the cover of our mini albums. Removing the backing to my score tape. We need to be able to have that exposed when we're ready to use it. Now I'm going to take my chipboard and push it against the paper. And then I'm going to just fold it over using a bone folder. Again, if you're not using artisan linen, make sure your paper can handle this type of burnishing against the chipboard. Be careful in the seams, you'll feel it. But when burnishing this over, you're going to find it's going to be so much easier to work with than I'm going to repeat with the bottom. Get it started there. And then just Fold it over and burnish that top section of the chipboard. And I'll open those up, fold this in half, and do the sides. Again, burnishing the top. is a pretty long piece. Now we can go ahead and get our corners prepared. What I like to do is where this square is right here, you've now created it from the burnishing. We're going to cut, cut out our square. This way you don't have to use any special tools. You don't have to figure how far off from the chipboard you need to be. It's like making a box. So just cut that square right out. Now we just want to miter the edges. So I fold back. This is the long side using my scissors and the chipboard as a stopper so my scissors can't go in any further. I'm just going to trim my edge. We're going to do this on all four sides to make sure nothing is extending past our chipboard. This is on my camera for you. And as long as you rest your scissors on that chipboard, you can't go in too far. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold down my short side, turn my my cot my chipboard, and we'll do the long side. Push that a little bit. 
bit more so it's laying more flat. There's nothing like a mini album cover that is nice and tight around this chipboard. Now I'm going to use sports tape at, at the top. You can use your art glitter glue if you like. Quarter inch, I'll use along the chipboard. This is just going to catch this bare spot that will be in between our chipboard. And the paper. Remove the backing to all the score tape. And then again, I'll be using my art glitter glue. And I like to put a bead right at the top of my chipboard. This is going to ensure that the paper is laying nice and tight on top of that chipboard. And it should anyway because we burnished it. So when you fold it over, there's no more fighting with it. See how easy that goes down? Stress free. And that's what I like about mini album making. I want it to be a fun process, but it's got to be stress-free. Now I'm just pushing against the chipboard, and you'll notice how nice and smooth and tight your album covers are. And what used to take me a good hour to make my covers now takes me less than 30 minutes. And sometimes it's worth that little extra expense for those score tape sheets. That's why I keep plenty in stock at countrycraftcreations.com because when it's stress free, well, we can actually get more done and we can use them for gifts, have them on hand, and then we're not feeling like crafting is such a chore. Making sure that glue's smeared around and your corners are going to be perfect every single time. It's like a no fool method. Uh, you can also check if you need to before you put your paper down to make sure nothing is extending past the edge. If it is, you can trim it, but you don't have to push it down anymore around your chipboard. With this method, you're just done. 14 minutes and we're done. With that portion. So now you can see it's starting to take shape. We want to cover the inside. So this is 10 inches long. And you'll want to cut two pieces of your cardstock at 9 and 7 eighths. Now on this one, I'm not worried about it meeting in the middle, but I am worried about it meeting at the top. And you need to check the seam, but we are going to end up hitting that seam, so no matter what we do. So I am going to go ahead and trim this down so it's, this is my two and a quarter up here at the top, the smaller, and this is the six by ten inch piece. So I'm going to go about a, an inch from this hinge. I'm going to cut that off.
and then with our second piece of cardstock so we'll make make that overlap this piece on the right hand side now by an inch we need to overlap an inch so they are almost the same size And that's how they'll fit. So once again, using my score tape sheets, these are a little bit wider than the score tape sheets, so I will be supplementing with my with the pieces from this. And if you haven't used them or you're not comfortable, it won't take you long to get comfortable. <laughs> so holding this down, I mean holding my fingers back there because I'm ready. I like to put it close to the edge as possible but I'm not gonna there you gotta lift it up because you don't want this part to grab your desk you actually can tear it just like regular score tape and then I'll just use this piece down here at this edge. And it's not really pertinent that we have score tape right there because we have quite a bit of score tape. So we are good to go. And I believe I had a piece left over from my cover that I can use. Again, getting it close to that edge. And we'll repeat again. a little off so I'll probably just actually it won't matter except we buckled a little bit here yes, there we go uh -huh. that's where you want to watch and if it buckles see it'll lay flat because score tape is so flexible and thin clean up that edge and then I'll clean up this one. And then we'll just fill in that little spot. And that's that. So now you can grab the cover. Making sure we put this on the correct way, correct orientation. It doesn't matter which one goes down first. It doesn't matter which one you know overlaps the other one. We will be covering that. I'm going to just make sure that there's nothing over the edges. If so, just take your finger and bend that over. It'll, it's really thin, so it'll go easily for you. Again, checking my orientation. Now it's extremely, extremely sticky. Keep your fingers back of the paper until you're ready to let it down.
burnish those edges. Ooh, on my spatula. Sure. Okay. Because if this was going to hit anywhere near here, I would have put a bead of glue, but we're going to be just fine. Let's line those up at the top and bottom. Tape. I'm going to clean that edge up. Now we want to fold up our hinge areas using our bone folder. See, and I didn't do that the first time. I didn't before we put this down because I have found with the score tape on our top sheet and bottom, now we don't really have to. We can do it all in one step. We have another one right here. But you still want to get that bone folder on each side of that chipboard so that it hugs that edge. Because it a nice professional um, finish. See how that looks? Let me it this way. Finish that down. No, there it is. I knew we had another one. edges of both sides of the chipboard. And that score tape that we put down as a spacer will also help to grab the piece we wrapped because there's no score tape. It grabs it from underneath. Holds it tight and you won't have to worry about any bubbling or our paper not laying flat. then when we before we cover it we'll get our magnets down or let's do that now so that it's one thing that won't be forgotten you can use magnets or you can even do a different kind of a closure if you want to use a a buckle type looking closure or you can do gosh you can do all kinds of different closures We'll get our magnets down when I come back and um, we'll get our cardstock cut. With the magnets, I'm using the large basic gray magnets. We do have those for sale at countrycraftcreations.com. And I'm going to just come in, it looks like about two inches from the side, making sure you center them pretty much. And because of the size, we may even we may need a third, but we're going to see these are pretty strong. 
The paper's not super thick. It's Echo Park. And what we want to do now is make sure our album is, or our cover, is how we want it. And we will put it together. And I do think I'm going to put one in the center. This is this is quite long. It's 10 inches. And it's the only place we'll use a magnet in this. So we're going to use them in the cover. This is also a great home organizer um, album. So if you want to make one for your bills, for bill organization, budgeting, it's a really cute file for that. So now these guys can just grab those two sides. We'll burnish that center. And we are nice and firm, tight all together. Nothing will fall out. For the hinges, you need to cut two pieces of cardstock that are seven and a half by five and one half. We're going to score, and I did score one, so I'll score one on camera. And let's see, I need to cut, cut mine to seven and one half. We're going to score at three quarters, one and one half. I don't want to mess up on camera. <laughs> Two and a quarter, because I'm really trying hard not to do that. Two and a quarter, and even though I know them, it's kind of like, you'll mess up. I'll mess up three. Three and one quarter. Four and one half. Five and a quarter. Six. And six and three quarters. Perfect. So we have two of them. Then we're just going to fold these. We're going to fold them back and forth. And you just want to, you want to just keep accordion folding these. Oh, where did my screen go? There. And I know it's noisy with this phone folder. You want these to be nice and creased. That's what you have. Then you want four pieces of cardstock that is 10. So I'm going to show you. It's going to be the exact same length, but we're going to do some scoring just on the edges. This is 10 inches by five and a half. Cut an extra. No, you need four of them. I didn't cut an extra one. Five and a half by 10. And then we're just going to score on each corner. I mean, each corner, each edge at one quarter. This is just to fold it over and give it a nice finished edge inside of our accordion. And just do that to all four pieces at one quarter of an inch. And they are 10 by 5 and 1 half.
can set those aside. Okay, our our album. Now we can we're go, we want to go ahead and do especially the inside. And before we put everything on, we might as well do the outside so we have a nice flat surface to work on. So you want to choose your paper. I'm going to give you the dimensions. I'll choose mine. I'll get it cut and then we'll put it on so I, I can get all my pieces cut. Let me show you some of the paper I'm real quick. So this is the Back to School by Echo Park. Really fun paper. Gives you some of the first days of school, things like that. And the back is also just as cute. A little more shadowy effect, or you know, where there's no color. So you just want to choose what you want to go on the inside and what you want to go on the outside. Here's what I'll be cutting mine. So for the flap, we know our pa paper is all going to be 10 inches, so we want to cut it 9 and 7 eighths. Every piece will be 9 and 7 eighths. This one, I will cut down to 2 and 1 eighth. Then you're going to want to cut two pieces, four pieces for the inside and the outside. Four that are 5 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7 eighths. Oh, and you do need to cut two pieces for the inside, so you'll need two for each one. Then our hinge area is one. I'll be cutting my one. Looks like about one and I'll try one and three eighths by nine and seven eighths. And you'll cut four of those. Go ahead and get those cut, get them inked. And also just make sure that the dimensions work for your album, depending on if you used your quarter inch spacers or not. And then we will we'll map the whole album. I have my pieces cut and these are the three sheets I chose. I chose the school blue with the chalkboard, and this is the stripes as the accent. So it will take three different designs. I also love that ruler, but I chose this for the front cover. So I'm going to use the stripes and the chalkboard. Now I'm going to start with the top. So I'm going to turn it sideways. We're going to place this over our magnets. And this is a, a bigger area. So I am going to take the tip off my art glue, but I still don't want to use a lot, but it will spread a lot faster. After you, you, after you use the art glitter glue without the tip, you do want to clean that off before you put your tip back on so you don't have any oozing of the glue around or down. Sometimes that can cause just little issues like that with your, the tip. And because we're using art glitter glue around our magnets, we do have to pay attention to where they are and sort of form the paper around the magnet. And then making sure it's, the glue is spread carefully over your magnet and you're good. Now on the inside, I'm going to use the back of the stripes. So you do want to make sure things are going up directional. This, the yellow print is the back of your striped paper. This would be a really nice gift for stay school for the teacher if she wanted to have it for organization. Great to organize bills. Like I mentioned, use your recipe paper so that you can have a kitchen organizer. A lot of fun different things with this project. But this one I want to use for the school year to put in those little things the kids bring home like they had a good behavior award then I can put it inside of here because to be honest with you do we really get things totally scrapbook no not always and this is the five and seven eighths I chose the chalkboard because we're going to also put up our this is where our accordion goes and it doesn't really show it does a little bit now sometimes you just need a place to file those little school notes. Not just, you know, so much scrapbook because we don't always get to them on every little detail of the kids' school. Nice thought. 
but it, it reality does not always happen. Yeah. Another one. Let's get that glue spread around. And then I'll use the same yellow print. And then to ink, I use the sepia. Move my camera down. Hopefully, it won't make you dizzy. So again, there we go. Long. Flipping this over again. If you're using paper that's directional, please check. You don't want your paper upside down. When I when I'm using stripes and patterns that aren't so much directional, I do still look at the other side of the paper. And I'm starting to really, if it's directional on the back, then I make sure the front's directional, even if it's just the stripes, because that's how they pretty much designed the paper to go and if you wanted to match all your stripes then you definitely would want your pattern to go the same way. Okay. Now I do want to fold it so I can double check. There we go. So I'm going to use the yellow also on the one and a half inch pieces here, making sure they're going to go the right direction. I get those ends. directional. I want to double check. So it's going to look upside down in the camera because I have to move it that way so I can work on it. I mean it is upside down in the camera but it won't be when we fold it closed. Again, pay attention to those magnets. Need to get a little more adhesive along the edge.
this is the bottom, but still, okay, I do want the paper to go the right direction. and the back. Oh, I did cut that crooked, but I had a little problem in my cutter. I pulled it back too soon. I realized that after I cut it. So that one is crooked. I'm gonna cut a new one. thought I trimmed it to where it would be okay, but it's not. Why? I think it's that score, that quarter inch spacing made it a little longer. That happens sometimes, so I did go clear to the six. These would be really cute sitting on the shelf, and then you can change them out at each year, put them in a box, and then maybe when they graduate, you can give the kids their box. Kind of like a time capsule. And just like that, we have our cover complete. On the accordions, I had you cut four. You need to cut one more, so we need five of the ten and a half by fives. Um, I counted wrong. Now, we need to also start, I want this standing up here. This is what's going to attach to our book. This is what our front page will attach to. So, we are going to start by attaching our accordions. And you're going to open it flat so we have this, this accordion that folds up here on our right. And I want you to add adhesive. Well, I had to stop the camera to get everything cleaned up. And it's what happens, so like I said, after you use it without the tip. There we go. So add your adhesive inside of that space there. Add your adhesive to this quarter inch. This quarter inch actually is going to adhere to this back piece. And this whole page is going to adhere to that three quarter of an inch. So it's going to sit right there. Within those four lines, and that's going to fold over to there. never done this before it can be a little confusing so I'll back up here this process is 
also to give it strain. That's why we're scoring at that three quarters, I mean that quarter inch. So I want more room on my page or my accordion. So we're putting that quarter inch right here on that back piece. Let me quit moving it. So, so your quarter inch is going to attach to this back hinge. It now becomes a little bit double there for a quarter of an inch. Then we put the glue and now it's glued shut, just like if you were gluing it onto a hinge. As we go, we're going to now grab our second hinge. This also needs to be facing in. Our ends will be facing in. So once again, so you'll be able to see this again, I'm going to add my glue to this hinge. If you want, you can just add a little bit on the other side of the score line, or you can add it directly onto this quarter inch hinge. And it's going to sit on the inside. Squeeze together. And we'll clean up any glue. Just like you're burnishing or putting the page onto your hinge. You do want to really burnish because you want it to be flat somewhat. So now that's the look that you'll have. The quarter inch, it is adhered back here. Oh, Wilbur has chewed up a box. <laughs> now this won't open because we've put this here. So we're going to do the same thing again. It's kind of just like doing a hinge. I'll lay this down now so you can see. This one. You do not put any adhesive on. We're going to put adhesive here. We're going to put adhesive on our quarter inch. And it's going to stick down up to the score line. We're going to fold that over. I like to then push them up so they're even. And it will stick. So let's do this first. That end one is just a little tricky. Now we want to put it down to the score line. Because our glue is wet, we have a few seconds to lift it up. Go ahead and burnish that down. Sorry, Wilbur, no. No. Oh, I wish you could see the look on this puppy's face. Now, this hinge over here, we want it to attach to the page. We're going to push it down. And burnish. Let's do the same thing now with this other side. Just fold it back. This is the little quarter inch that we scored. Oops. Lay this back down. Fold it over. That's our second one. Oops. Yeah, make sure you don't get your hinges stuck together. Quarter inch. Let's go ahead and just adhere it to both sides. Right to that score line. Adhesive and then down.
fold that over. Our next page, again, that quarter inch. Oh, he's trying his darndest to get into the garbage over there. Up to that score line. Wilbur, what do you have? A box. He's back into boxes. Guess he needs more fiber in his diet. Okay. Flip that over. glue in the wrong places. Now this is our our fifth one will sit on top just like so. And it's going to go to the edge. a mess. Good thing this glue dries clear. And my clothespins for a moment. Now this first one, so you'll have a little bit of divider here, and we could have probably cut that down, but that will be just fine. So real quick, you know that um, piece that was sticking out? I wasn't thinking, I've got, and you're going to hear him over there, I'm going to have to go see what Wilbur's doing, but you need to add adhesive, so I just reached inside there. And on that hinge, I added the adhesive. And go ahead and glue it down so that it is attached. See how it's attached to the front of my page? But you would, we had that little piece sticking out. I kept thinking, what on earth is wrong? That's what's wrong. We need to add adhesive to that whole hinge, just like we did to all the others. See? And then with the quarter inch, this is why we scored it. We have nice finished edges. All right. Now let me go see what Wilbur has, and we'll... We'll get the bottom made. For the little hinge that goes on the bottom, I cut a piece of cardstock that is three and 
to give the exact measurement here. Three, it's a little over three and a half, so about three and five eight by ten and a quarter. You don't have to be exact, but you do need at least an inch on each side because that's going to help keep it inside of our book. But we want to basically wrap our chipboard on the ends. Okay, so we're going to put our adhesive onto the chipboard. And this is also going to give it a nice sturdy like bottom so that you can put everything's into the pockets. Finish that on and then we're going to just like when we did the chipboard for the cover go past those edges now if these are going to be the hinges if you're using black cardstock then you could use like black chipboard and you don't even really have to worry about covering it so you would you would cut your cardstock exactly nine and then you, you didn't have you won't have to worry about these ends but I want to cover these ends because I don't want them to show and then we're going to just angle these because we do need that piece angled and we just need to cover the ends here so they look nice you need to angle the hinges they'll fit inside of the pockets So we're going to glue the ends down. Then it's covered. Okay, if you want, you could put an, a piece of red across the top. Let me show you. The only thing is, you know, you'll just see from, you really don't, you do see inside. So let's go ahead with our pattern paper, just like we're going to, let's see if I've got one going the correct direction. Okay, just like, just like we're going to mat, mat this. So it's nine inches, so I'll cut this down to eight and seven, eight. Well, no, I'm going to cut it nine. Sorry. I'm going to cut it the exact same length. Maybe we'll just take a hair off. So we have that red that will show a little bit. And it was one and three eighths. So I'm going to cut this at one and three eighths. At least when we're looking down into the pocket, we won't see the chipboard. That's why if you're using black paper, black chipboard, but now we'll just cover that and it gives us more of a finished look from the inside of our pockets. They'll look kind of cool in there, the ruler. So if you do have black paper, then you could take your black permanent marker across there if you wanted. So we're going to now, oh, these become our hinges. Let's fold them inwards, burnish them again on that chipboard. So my mine is kind of directional. This is the front. The back is this hinge piece. This is going to sit on the inside like so. And it's not, you'll notice it's not as wide. You want to center it. You're going to have about an eighth of an inch on each end. So we're going to add our adhesive to the outside here. Enter it. 
push it up as far as it will go. And that first one, it should come right to the edge. Oops, little, it is a little different to, to do. So once you get it in there, you can turn it over. And then you can finish burnishing it with a spatula if you have one. Or get in there with your bone folder. Then you want to make sure that this goes inside, not on the outside here. And we could. It's going to attach to the book, but... It might be might be easier and it might yeah I think that'll be easier for you so let's fold that down make sure it goes on the inside of the hinge I'm doing that then I'm going to turn it over. So I think either way, it's going to be have its own struggles. This one just takes a little bit of patience. And there, it does look better with the, the matting. So there's your little pocket. Now, I do want to mount the insides. These are five and a half. You can see how that is nice and and it has a nice firm bottom now. So these are five and a half. They should be get an exact yeah, five and a half by nine and a half because we scored them a quarter inch on each side. So I'm going to cut mine at five and three eighths by nine and three eighths. And you want to mat the outside. And then I'm going to mat the inside back. So you'll cut one, two, three, four sheets, and let me grab the papers. So what I'm going to do is just pretty much now go in order. I'll do, I don't want to use the back, that's too much red. So I'll use the front and the back. So there's two, three, four, and five. Okay, cut these down to nine and three eighths. And of course, whatever one you would like on the front. It's only one, two, three, four, five. Two, there's my three. Cut the others. Three, four, and five. But we're going to mix up our patterns here. Two, three, four, and five.
cute for pencil boxes. This print. And I love the wood. Oh goodness, I totally missed. And I think we'll do these flat next time. Before we put the bottom on. on there and I smeared it. I did not allow for the cutting of our hinges. So I'm going to go ahead before we continue. I'm going to put this on the back side of the front. You'll see what I you'll know what I mean if you're putting this together. We didn't measure I didn't measure off for those hinges. But that's okay. I'll line the front. It'll be extra strong. And we'll cut the rest of them down. Ah, I'm not doing so great getting things on straight today. So my suggestion, since you know I'm just doing this kind of on the fly, is that you do the matting before we move on. We'll do it a little different. And if you watch us on Country Craft Creations or Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, I'll show that way on Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and measure back here in between those hinges, and it's actually going to be measures out to eight and eight so each one inside is going to measure eight to eight in between those hinges yeah so let's go ahead and cut these down what if we got here we didn't like the red on there but i think we'll go with it that text at the end okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut my length down to Eight inches. Yeah, that will sit in between our hinges. Whoops, our hinges right here. So that works great. Those white edges. messy when going into pocket chests. Score tape sticks before you want it to. <laughs> and at least art glitter glue will dry clear and you can get it wiped off of there. Okay. Go inside and burnish there.
So definitely, definitely, if you are on Scrapbookers, then there's also a live recording of this, and you'll see where we're mat going to match. So I'm doing the video before I'm doing it live to make sure it's a doable product project, and it is. We just got to get these little things worked out. But Matt before will Matt be matting on the show before. Put your hand down there. Oh, it's time for a new wipe. That's part of the problem. So I leave my diaper wipes open so that they kind of dry out. They're not super, super soaking wet. And that really helps when you want to clean adhesive off the top when it's, it dries clear for the most part, but because I've gotten some lint in it from that other one that was worn out, so there's, there's going to be a little bit showing. And it eventually will continue drying, but it will going to show a little so I will take an emery board to that edge after it's fully dry. Number four. So it's easier to work on this way. It would be easier to work on before you put the chipper on the bottom. You can see it on the top where I got lint in there. So when that happens, and if you do have any adhesive that you can see and it's going to drive you nuts, just take your emery board. I still will wait a little bit more to make sure, you know, my paper's fully dry and just clean it up. It'll come right off. And you can grab your album. And you're going to want this to sit right here at the back. So we're going to um, we're going to be gluing these hinges, and then just right across that edge at the bottom. And I'm going to sit this at the edge where I have the matting, so when it comes up, it will meet. See, it's going to meet your hinge. It's hard to see. And then you just want to center it inside of the page. So we're going to add our adhesive on both sides. And here at the bottom, now the back will become a pocket. You'll see here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and check side to side. Come down.
some pressure there. And then if you have clothes bins, go ahead and just put them on the side here for a few minutes. And we'll just let that dry. Okay, we're going to make a pocket that sits at the bottom of our album. And you want a piece of cardstock that is 12 inches by 10 inches. And we're going to first score. Oh, hold on. One. He only does this when the kids are gone. And he has a whole case of magnets. Okay, starting on the 10 inch side. Oh, he's gonna get it. He only starts this when I start filming. We're gonna score it. one and a half, one, one and a half, and turn to the other side. I'm gonna score again at one half, one, one and a half, and I'm going to turn and we're gonna score it. Four and a half. To be honest with you, I now just fold it up. I burnished my four and a half inch score line. And we're going to score again at four and a half, and I'll tell you why. When I'm doing pockets, I like to see how much of a hangover I'm going to have onto the, the pocket. And if you don't uh, mind, then you just go four and a half and nine. But that's how I kind of get this flat. You'll this one right here, whether I want it to be longer or not. Now I do things weird. So what we're going to do, go ahead and just fold up these score lines. We have some cutting we need to do. And then also, um, let me show you. So we don't want our pocket, well you might. You might want your pocket all the way up there. I don't. So I'm going to actually take off half of an inch. I'll show you. This is the top piece, the smaller score line. This is the, the back and this piece. So if you don't want or you want to just cut a thumb hole, you can do it either way. I I know that it's we can probably cut this the perfect length, but I'd rather not figure out the score marks. I'm sorry. This is called the lazy man's pocket or lazy crafter's pocket. And then I'm going to cut off a half of an inch from the top. I mean, from the bottom, from the bottom. The top piece is your fold over. Now see, that'll give me that much room to reach into my pocket. You can take it off a quarter of an inch, three quarters of an inch, or half of an inch. That kind of gives you options that way. Now, in order to make this into a pocket, we only need accordions down here at the bottom. Remember, your top piece is your three inch piece. So we're going to cut away all of this, and I'll show you. Don't cut off the bottom, and I haven't even um, scored them yet, so I'm going to angle it just like so. I'm going to cut all the way to the top, or you can put it in your scoreboard. I like to do pockets sometimes like this because it also gives you a clean finish in the back. You don't see the, the paper. We're not putting it just down on the matting of the cover. So we want to cut the three inch section, the middle section, and when we get down here to the bottom, we're going to just angle that like so. So it looks like a rocket ship. Then if you want this top part, you can round those corners.
and then we want to go ahead and accordion fold our half inch score line. So you're going to go inwards, outward, and in. So all the finished edges are on the outside. Then we're going to do it to the other side. In. I have to tell you, my finger is starting to kill me. Uh, you want to fold it in so that nothing is hanging over the edge. Then this is going to come up. So, you know, it's up to you. Do you want to, I'm going to mat mine after so it sits on top of the hinge part. You can do your matting beforehand if you like. So we're going to add adhesive to both sides. And now for my cover, I'll grab those mag, uh, not magnets, but clothespins. Making sure a nice, clean edge, no glue coming out. Now while that's drying, we can go ahead and cut our matting. So the top I know is three inches, so I'm going to mat all of this. So I'll need two pieces that are two and seven eighths, and our pocket is seven inches wide. So two and seven eighths by six and seven eighths for two. Now if you're going to use a magnet closure, you'll need to we'll need to get that out too. I'm going to use this also. So again, six and seven eighths, but four inches is what I've cut this down to. So make sure you measure it to see what you cut it to. So two six and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Two three and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. And you do need two. Oh no, you don't need one for the back. I take the back so we're going to glue that down. Then you just need a six and seven eighths probably by an inch. And this will look really cute in there no matter what I use. So we're going to let that dry, and let's go ahead and cut our pieces. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little more. Try to get those numbers in there. Let's see what I have not used. Let's see what I can get. down to six and seven eighths. So I don't like to cut too much. Oh, that'll look cute. Then I'll use the back side for the inside. The writing, which I think is really cute. Stars and apples. So for the apples, I'll cut that to three and seven eighths. Oh, see, that's what I did earlier on that other piece. It's my finger. By six and seven eighths. And it's starting to hurt from pushing. That's that one I broke. This should be drying. Oh. Well, I guess I'll use that. I didn't cut it off too bad, so I think we're good there. I'm going to ink our edges. Red's pretty cute, too. I think this whole line is just adorable. 
this down. Oh, let's not get it down. Magnet. If you're using a magnet, it needs to go first. So that was a good save. My tools are starting to get buried. Great little place to put some dates. Um, did I pick the wrong one? No, I didn't. And I'll make sure this fits Oops. before I add my adhesive. Yes, it does. Grab your book. And, you know, decide your placement. You can even just put it here and then add some picture frame. Oh, that'd be cute too, huh? Add some picture frames there. Or you can center it. I'm sure we could do some three by. Let's do that. Let me give a, get a measurement before I put it down. Oh, that is pretty close. It'd have to be two by twos. Two 
two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Be cute just to cut your picture down. I'm cutting the white pieces at two and an eight by two and one eight. These are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Except for that one. So it's things like this that you can decide, you know, where you want your pockets, depending on what you're going to put around it, of course. So before I put the pocket down, let me put these down. I'm not going to ink them because they are um, white. The white core doesn't really show, and they're pretty small. I don't want to get ink all over. And then I'll use these for, for the 2 by 3 pictures cut down. And I can put a picture of Hunter, like Hunter and Bailey, brother and sister in here, because they'll share an envelope or an album. My thoughts are like one per family that has the young school kids. So let's place the envelope at the bottom of the alphabet here. Turn that up just a hair. And bring this one down just to her. Great to have lines for placement. So using it in between the alphabet. Let's see at the bottom. And I'll use that other dotted line in between the P and the Q, or the O and the P. I can't wait till we get our place photo hair stamps that we're having made exclusively for Country Craft Creations because they're small and so it'd be really cute to use on this. Okay, now I can decide exact placement for my pocket. And when you have that placement, then you can add your adhesive. These pockets, you saw how easy and quick they are to make. So if you want to make one for each of your dividers, that would be really cute. I did make this extra one. I'll show you for a moment because I'm going to have it go in the very back. And this is my extra one. This one I won't magnetize. And then it can actually, you know, they can they can sit in each one and you can even make them bigger. Just make them, you know, wider. And then also you can leave that flap and so they'll hang over each you can hang over each one of your um, flaps. So you can have one hanging over the front, which that's really cute. And then one can be in each pocket. And that way I can have one for Hunter, one for Bailey. And it still has room for the memorabilia, different photo mats. And then we'll go on now. Oh, to the bottom also. You can go ahead and mat this bottom piece if you want. Just a long hair. We've got the scraps that are going to correct 
orientation because the way I cut them. A blue one. Oh, here we have some wood grain. Remember, this is nine inches by one and three eighths. So I'm going to cut this down. Cut it to eight and seven eighths. by one and a quarter. adds a really nice finishing touch. There we go. <laughs> Lining my magnets up. Okay, I've started with my cover. One thing, I, I did glue this down before the camera. I didn't notice it was on. These are just the ephemera packs. This one is the ephemera pack, not the tags and frames. And I took the back out and I just layered them on top of each other. And then this is the back to school and I'm mounting it on just a scrap piece of the wood grain that's going to go with the banner. It says back to school. And this will help that to pop, getting it straight. And I'm going to use hot dots on the back of this so that we can, well, pop it up. And then with the pop dots, I still use my art glitter glue because you want it to last. And then I love books. Like I said, these are all in the ephemera pack. For this one, I'm not going to back it because it's a circle. And, it's, and you know what it's like cutting circles. <laughs> so, put that right there. And then I, I just loved this postcard. So this is in the ephemera pack. And I chose this wood grain tag. To layer over and then school time. I'm going to use some of the enamel dots. So I'm just going to layer that over. And then from the sticker sheets, and the sticker sheets are just adorable too. I'm going to use the scissors after we put these down. Underneath there a little bit. And then the tag. So what I'll do is on these diagonals, I'm going to write Hunter Bailey. And in school time, but to be honest with you, this is really a quick project. I may end up making one for each of the kids because it really doesn't take that much time. Then my scissors. I mean, there's times when I just stick the stickers down. They, they have pretty good adhesive, but... I know that they're not going to last the whole time if I don't use the glue with it. So let me get, see what we've got to match my leftovers. So I keep all of my pop dots from all of the projects. I 
And these aren't ones that match, so let's try a different box. This one looks better. I have them, I used to have them sorted by color, but not anymore. Here we go. Here's some red. Oh, here's some bright yellow. And that's what we need on the tags. Like this may have been from the Dis a Disney one. Maybe last year's Disney. Oh, lots of different ones. So, wait. Oh, I can go blue. That's what I like about the colors, you know, with the companies. If you kind of stick with them, you'll find something in their lines that match. It never fails. Okay, I'm going to take these small white ones. These were from a Christmas line. And add it to the edge of the banner. This edge of the banner. It's like on the scissors, I'm going to use a little glitter to pop, even though those are silver. I'm going to add some gold to go with the rest of the gold here. And I like to, I love using the pop dots in different areas because it does give it some dimension. And there's the front. Now, if you want to do anything to the top, the stickers would really work right there because there's some really cute um, like these that match. It matches the stripes so it looks like it's continuing on the top. I'm going to go ahead and use the matting with my scissors as the guide. Your scissors should sit on there nicely. And you can cut straight across. No extra holding power. And that's that. And there you guys have a really cool little memory file box um, so that you can journal and keep track of all the kids' things during the school. A couple of picture spots, then you've got a nice wide pocket, and then you have all these little pockets to go back through. So you saw how easy your envelopes are to make. You might want to make a, quite a few to go in each of these pockets. They're going to hold a lot. There's a lot of room. Then you have this one on the back. And of course, it's not going to be as um, expandable, but you can still put, put one in there. So in the back, this would fit perfect, just hanging over the edge there. And I hope you enjoyed our little project. I know I did. I loved making it, and I'm so happy how it turned out. So thanks, everybody. And I'll see you hopefully on Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations.